Good morning, friends. Our scripture reading this morning will be from Luke 24, verse 36 to 48. But I will also make reference to 1 John 3, verse 1 to 7, as well as Acts 3, verse 12 to 19. But then our main scripture reading, Luke 24, verse 36 to 48. While they were still thinking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything yet to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in, his, in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still here with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me, in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of God. Thanks be to Him. I once heard someone say that a Christian should walk with the Bible under one arm and the newspaper under the other. We are children of God, freed from eternal death by the blood of Jesus, holy, set apart for Him. But we also have a purpose in this world we live in. We are to be His disciples, His witnesses on earth. We need to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, where the message of hope in Christ Jesus is needed now more than at any other given point of time in the history of mankind. But to do that effectively, we need to know what's going on around us. We need to know our own context. Even the authors of the Bible even though they were inspired by the Holy Spirit, wrote from within their own context. And that is why someone like Paul, for example, felt that he needed to provide guidelines to the Ephesians on relationships. Relationships between husbands and wives, parents and children, employers and employees, etc. Because he saw from within the, his own context that the way these people were doing relationships was chaos. So he gave practical advice on how to do relationships in a way that would please and glorify God. So to read the newspaper or to know our own context is very important because it's always from within our own context that we understand things better and learn faster. It's easy to learn with association. I remember when I was in standard 3 or grade 5 these days, I had to learn the names of three types of deep sea fish. And Ermelo is quite far from the sea, but luckily we had a neighbor named Machil. And if I thought about him combing his hair while sticking out his tongue, I could remember mackerel, tongue fish and herring. From within my own context, I was able to learn something about the sea, which I, for some inexplicable reason, can remember to this day. But it's even more important to see situations with a kingdom perspective. Because if we look at things only from a worldly perspective, we would ultimately lose hope, wouldn't we? In our reading from Acts, we see in Peter's words to the Jews here how dangerous it is to only see things from a worldly perspective. They are surprised, even shocked, by this miraculous healing of the lame man. They thought that Peter and John did that within their own power. They must have thought that something weird or even magical was going on here. And the reason for this, friends, is because their eyes were not opened by God. Excuse me. They saw things the way they wanted to, basically. Their focus was just on the year and now, and not on eternity. Immediate gratification instead of eternal happiness. Peter then continues to explain to them that because of their spiritual blindness, they chose to free a known murderer instead of Jesus, the chosen servant of the Father, the Holy and Righteous One, the author of life, 
even though Pilate wanted to let him go. In a sense, it's like, it's like my reading glasses. Without it, I just see a blurry image on any page I'm trying to read. But when I put them on, wow, it's like a whole new world being created before my very eyes. I can see things that I couldn't see before. Now they are always there, I just couldn't see it. The glasses didn't add new things, it just helped me to see clearly those things that were there all along. Our spiritual glasses is the Holy Spirit of God. He leads us and guides us and opens our eyes so that we can see a clearer picture than the rest of the world. Where the world sees fear, we see peace in Christ. Where the world sees hate, we see peace in Christ. Where the world sees confusion, we see peace in Christ. Where the world sees hopelessness, we see peace in Christ. Same situation, different perspectives. When we submit ourselves to God, so if the Holy Spirit can open our spiritual eyes, the eyes of our heart, then we can have hope. Even this time, where there's a worldwide pandemic, we can see that our God reigns. He is in control. We might not have all the answers or solutions. 1 Corinthians 13 says that now we only see a blurry image, but one day we will see clearly. But we know that you made us is in control. We can then also see sin for what it really is, an evil thing that separates us from God. And then the deep desire to break free from all sin is born within us. And friends, the spiritual, the way our spiritual eyesight gets opened to see clearly is through our thoughts, our minds. Remember the brain controls the eyes. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform yourself to the standards of this world. But let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and pleasing to Him and is perfect. In Luke 24, we read today that when Jesus appeared to His disciples, He opened their minds so that they can understand the Scriptures. He opened their minds in the same way that the Holy Spirit is opening our minds, and that is by renewing our thoughts by taking away the old worldly thoughts in us and replacing them with fresh new spiritual thoughts. But in this process of having our minds renewed by God, we also have responsibility. We can't just sit back and watch TV or sleep. James 4 verse 8 says, Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. The more we seek the presence of God, the more He will open our minds to understand what he wants to tell us. But then where do we seek God? Well, the most important place is Scripture, the Bible. It is the most important way in which God reveals himself to us. Remember that every word in the Scripture, the Bible, is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Even prophets or preachers has to be tested against the, will of, the Word of God to determine if the message they bring is from God or not. Because even the devil pretends to be an angel of the light and deceives many people in that way. And yes, even the message I bring today must be tested against the word of God to determine if it's true or not. But now the most important way to know the Bible is to actually read it. Every day, even twice, as, twice a day, as often as possible. We are to read the word, meditate on it and really apply it to our lives. Then we will find that our minds will be opened more and more. We will understand the heart of God more and more. And the most exciting thing, well for me anyway, about the Word of God, is that we will never fully understand it. There will always be more to learn. There will always be another treasure to find, even if we read the same passage a hundred times. A good example of this is the lectionary readings we use for our sermons in the Methodist Church and also the Anglican Church, Presbyterian Church and a whole lot of other denominations. Most of us use the same readings worldwide but every single sermon is different. Because this book, the Bible, is an inexhaustible source of faith, love and hope. But if we don't read it, we won't experience it. 
And these days, most of us have a Bible app on our phones. So literally, everywhere we go, we have the Bible with us. And if we read the Bible with the intention to learn, we will read the newspaper with new eyes as well. We won't always understand why things are happening, but we will know where we can be the salt and the light in this sick, tasteless, dark world we live in. We will start to see God in our context as well. So friends, we must read our Bible. Get yourself a diary if it will help. In our church, we have a WhatsApp group where we read the Bible in a year. We read about three or four chapters a day. So it does take a bit of discipline and effort. And this is the second year that we're doing this, but it's like a whole new adventure for me. I learn new things every day. The more we read the Bible, the closer we come to God, and the closer God comes to us. And there's really no place that I'd rather be than close to God. Amen.